All right, welcome everyone to the new episode of uh, the Electric Podcast, the last one for the year. I'm joined by Seth Wintraub as usual. Seth is How's going, I'm doing good. Not, not as good as you down in Florida, I'm sure. No, it was great here. Yeah, in Quebec right now where you're getting killed. But um, so this, this episode is going to be mostly focused on uh, what to expect next year in the world of EVs and renewable energy and everything that we cover at, uh, at Electrek. Uh, we're not going to go back and uh, look at the year 2017. That's uh, Even though it was a great year, I think it's more fun to just look forward and uh, look into 2018 and what's coming. And of course, we're going to cover the we, We're going to talk about the news that we covered this week with some, uh, some exciting news in the world of EVs as usual. But um, so let, let's start quickly with, with what was the biggest news of this week for Electrek. Uh, and that was Elon Musk talking about the Tesla pickup. Of course, when we talk pickup truck in the U.S., it's a big thing. So in our, our audience is maybe like 50%, 60% U.S., 40% uh, the rest of the world. Like uh, we're still pretty popular in, uh, in Europe and, and uh, other places. So those places, <laughs> they don't care about pickup trucks. But even then, when we talk about them, we talk about the Tesla pickup truck. It, it get it gets pretty crazy in the U.S. So Musk has been talking about doing a pickup truck with Tesla for years now. We we, we remember back in 2013 or something he, he first mentioned it, and uh, uh, he had a, a general idea of what he was looking for in terms of, of of specs. Because uh, and at that point, the the F150 for from Ford was already the, the biggest selling vehicle, and even passenger car in the um, passenger vehicle in the US. So it makes sense to electrify the segment at some point, but uh, it wasn't clear where in the product lineup from Tesla, uh, a pickup truck will fit, uh, like with the Model 3 coming, and they were talking about the Model Y, then out of nowhere, last month, they unveiled the Roadster. So no one knew exactly where it would fit in that lineup, but now this week, uh, Elon confirmed that the Tesla pickup truck will be Tesla's focus after the Model Y. Though we never said when the Model Y would come, but we expect it will be unveiled sometime next year and uh, will come to market probably 2019, 2020 in that uh, in that uh, range. I don't know if you agree with that, Seth. Yeah, so I, I, I agree with that for sure. Um, and I'm, I'm fairly certain that they have to show us something uh, next year. Um, for Model Y. For the Model know. Y. Yeah. Um, as far as the pickup, it was interesting. His tweet uh, talked about how it's kind of all in his head. Like that, that to me was like, well, shouldn't you have something on paper by now? Or like, <laughs> you know, maybe a couple of drawings or, you know, let Franz know something that you're thinking about it. I'm sure um, they have like a clay model or something like that. Or... Yeah. And, you know, like, frankly, uh, they can probably take the Model Y and, you know, just lop off the back, you know, whatever. It's not hard to make a pickup. Uh, comparatively to a uh, well, if SD, they if SD they SD use game. the Model Y as a platform, it's going to be smaller. Because uh, one thing that I should mention too, he later because uh, that was mentioned in a tweet storm, a little tweet storm that he did after Christmas, um, and uh, he also mentioned that he, he he was aiming for something similar in size as the F one fifty, and uh, actually or, a bigger vehicle. Yeah, or a, a little bigger. So Model Y platform would be a little small for. Um, which actually model three platform because they they're gonna right. they're gonna use for both cars, but uh, yeah, they could use some uh, some existing uh, technology or even platform maybe the model X. Right, take the model X platform. I mean that makes a lot more sense. From you know you have a big uh, big wheels, you have the uh, you know the big base. Like uh, the model X is a big car. Um, you know, I'm just a couple months into my model X experience and. It's just like it's a monster of a car. It's just so big, barely fits right. in parking spots. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's for sure it's going to be the biggest uh, consumer vehicle from Tesla to date. If um, whenever it comes out, but um, in term of uh, in term of demand, in terms of size of market, it, it, it makes sense for Tesla to enter that space. That's for sure. If you just look at the uh, people, don't realize that outside the U.S., but the the Pickup trucks are the best-selling passenger vehicles in the U.S. right now. So, and a, a few months back, I wrote a, an opinion piece about this because uh, 
it wasn't clear what it would take to make uh, American automakers just go all in into uh, the electric space. And I, I thought that maybe because uh, Tesla did a lot of work just even before uh, delivering the Model 3, uh, just by showing the car and taking reservation and showing that it was a huge demand for the car, that alone had a, a lot of impact on, on, on the industry in general. And people started uh, increasing their investment into uh, a normal electric vehicle in the same segment. So I thought that if Tesla can do the same with a pickup, just even if it's not ready to go to production, if it's uh, two years away, three years away, whatever, just show what you have, show a concept, just like they did with the Tesla Roadster recently. Show what you can do in this segment with an all-electric powertrain, then start taking reservation and use that giant user base that Tesla has that really excited and uh, they, they get the reservation. And that would just like send an electric shock into the uh, American automakers that just makes all their money. They make all their money, all the profit from the trucks. And if they see uh, a, even the potential of that going away, I think they will just they they, they, they will stop sitting on their hands and, and start working on at least a prototype of an electric pickup truck. That yeah, I, I agree. Tesla's in a kind of a unique position because they don't have a full lineup of cars. They don't have to worry about the Osborne effect, which is you know pre-announcing something that uh, would take away from current sales. So you know nobody nobody's thinking about buying a Tesla truck right now because one doesn't exist. I mean, you know, some people may buy a Model X. If they want to pick up, but not, you know that, that's that's a very strange uh, would be a strange decision. Um, so, by you know, this is something that Apple does, for instance. You know, when they when they have a watch, they announce or the iPhone, they announce the iPhone eight months before you could get your hands on one, or you know, the watch was a, you know a full year because they can go. It kind of spoils uh, the 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 sales for other companies because you know. The, the consumers are like, well, if I wait a few more months, I can get a Tesla. So it it allows Tesla to to pull sales from you know previous uh, or, or earlier competition. So um, while they don't have you know they don't have a, a microbus and they don't have all these different segments right now, but you know if Tesla was to announce a Model S you know upgrade. And they said, you know, it's going to come out in a year. Nobody would buy Model S's for, yeah, for, you know, for that time period. So they're in a kind of a unique position because they're not like other automakers where they have a truck line and a SUV and all this other stuff. So they can do this right now. But um, you know, once once they catch up and they have products in all these categories, they're not going to be able to do these year early or two or three year early uh, announcements. Yeah, for sure. For Since it's a new segment for them, it's an opportunity to do that. That's a good point. But uh, yeah, because if they do it with their existing lineup, it's uh, it's already a problem right now. If there's a rumor coming up that uh, uh, Model S or Model X are getting a, a new, not even a, a, like a, a refresh or anything like that, just a new feature. And it's uh, and uh, we, we we haven't seen that that much in uh, in 2017 uh, actually because uh, the main thing is a new battery. I think when when a car gets a new battery pack, yeah. um, people are interested. Like do, do, we start making calculation like dollar per kilowatt hour. Does it make sense? Is it cheaper? Uh, will I get more range out of it? But uh, Tesla actually didn't uh, introduce a new battery pack for. In model S and X uh, in 2017. Well, they, they sort of did with the 100D uh, configuration because the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack was introduced in 2016, in late 2016. But only for but, the performance versions. Yeah, uh, they, they focused the production for the uh, P100D first. And since they, they, they had the issue with the pack at first, it, it took a while before the 100D got delivered. So, Technically, the hundred D was delivered in two thousand seventeen, but uh, in terms of new battery pack capacity, the the hundred kilowatt hour was introduced in two thousand sixteen. So there was no new pack in two thousand seventeen. So that that only does actually what we expect from from two thousand eighteen. Um, and uh, we we uh, we published an article uh, on that this week. Uh, what we expect from Tesla in two thousand eighteen. And uh, we talked about Model 3, of course, since uh, officially 2017 was the year of the Model 3, was the, the year of the launch and start of production ramp up. But uh, of course, there were some very publicized delays in the in the ramp up. 
but uh, as we reported extensively in the last few weeks, those delays are mostly worked through, and uh, well, those production issues are mostly worked through, and uh, right now, deliveries are, are going at, at full speed. Uh, this week, we saw a new video, some uh, uh, an electric reader uh, ended up um, uh, taking a, a quick uh, drone video at Fremont factory, and we saw what we saw uh, the week before was like just parking lots full of Model 3s, and they were, which was mostly a good sign for most people uh, watching, but the, the, as usual, the Tesla naysayers started saying, oh, if uh, if there's Model 3 in the parking lot, it's because they have issues with the, uh, something, a production defect or something, or, or there's no demand for it, like people are not, com are not uh, there's a lot of reservation, but people are not confirming the orders or, or something like that. Um, but this week, we, we, we got, uh, we crushed that, um, that speculation with uh, we saw that the cars were just flowing out of the factories in the parking lot and after a while the trucks were coming and they were putting the mobile threes on the trucks and the trucks were going to uh, delivery centers in fremont in san francisco and los angeles and uh, everywhere in the california right now yeah it seems like tesla is now starting to get that you know close to that um peak where they were hoping to get at the end of the year um, it just the curve wasn't quite as smooth as uh, originally anticipated. It was, more like, yeah. it was more like a L curve, you know, yeah. like it just really low and then boom, all the way up to the top. Yeah. Um, but you know, they got there, I guess, or they're they're getting. Well, we don't low. know for sure. We for sure there was an, an increase in production. But are, are, are they right now at five thousand a week? Nah, I'm not sure. But uh, they they they. Could be like a, I think at the last earning call, uh, Elon was talking about. Even though the 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 confirm during that call that they were missing that five thousand a week target, he said that it was at least a couple a thousand a week. So that that might be true with what we're seeing right now with uh, just anecdotal evidence from uh, from uh, what we see at Fremont. We have uh, our little spies and such. Yeah, but, and uh, I don't know if you saw that tip, Fred, but um, somebody in the uh, Fremont area tipped us that. Um, they're they're going to be working at the factory basically, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Twenty four seven until midnight at, on New Year's Eve, uh, cranking out absolutely as many uh, Model Threes as they possibly can. Yeah. Although I think that would probably be the case anyway. Yeah, we were expecting that anyway. the The question is more like how many Model Threes that will come that that, that will come to, but because. Uh, earlier this month, when uh, I published my uh, my report for the expectation for deliveries in Q4, which we're gonna have as soon as next week, Tesla was, will confirm them uh, uh, early next week. Uh, I was expecting about a thousand deliveries for Model Three in, in, in Q4. Right now, I'm thinking that maybe that was low that, uh, with what we're seeing right now. Um, I mean, just just uh, I didn't receive that today, but for deliveries today, I got uh, twelve. Uh, Yes, 12 separate reports from people that were taking deliveries today. And we have Jamie's uh, G Electric as Jamie De Jameson Dow is also taking delivery. And I had he's 12. Getting, he's got two, I think. Yeah, I think, well, in, in his family, in his family. He's, he's getting two. So, and But separately, I got like from just from readers, I got 12 reports for deliveries today over the last week that people got confirmed deliveries today. So I, I can only assume that if. Uh, like less that has to be less than ten percent of people taking deliveries that would try to contact me or they check for to, to and probably a lot less than ten percent. So they, they could be uh, as many as hundreds of of deliveries uh, per day of a uh, of the Model Three right now. I wouldn't be that surprised. I actually think that the bottleneck might be deliveries right now. Like if we look at uh, the video that we, we we saw from the Fremont factory and everything, like why are are the Model Threes parked? Uh, in, uh, the inventory is going up, and Model Threes are parked in Fremont and something like that. Uh, I I think that like there, there's a limit on Tesla's delivery uh, capacity too. They, they they're used to delivering Model S and X, and there there's always a rush at the end of the year for those vehicles anyway. Then you add the Model Three on top of that, um, it's starting to get difficult, uh, and, and also mo mo well. At least Model Three right now is just existing owners. Uh, they already are Tesla owners, so they are familiar with the technology already. So maybe deliveries are can be can be easier if you don't have to go through all these. Yeah, you know, kind of weird. And we saw that. So there was one other data point um, that uh, car registry thing um, where uh, they report um, recalls. You know what I'm talking about? 
Uh, I'm not sure. The uh... oh, are you talking uh, about so there's, VIN? there's uh, this? Uh, yeah, the VIN numbers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw so, it this uh, weekend. So we saw a big bump. Yeah, it um, went from like, like four thousand to eight thousand, I think. Something like right. That. Like it was the biggest bump yet. So you know that's that's a sign that um, production is finally ramping up. Yeah. I think I think Tesla on their you know quarter four earnings call is going to say something like, you know, we met our end of year goal of having five thousand, you know, per week. Uh, because you know we had maybe a hundred the second week before, but our last week we actually had five thousand. So yeah, they, they could even say like the last three days they were at the rate that would end up being five thousand a week. So there, there's definitely a lot of ways to play with that. You gotta be careful. But if if they technically are, then and then it's great. I mean, uh, it's not. Yeah. It, it, it bodes well for 2018, which is what we're gonna talk about. <laughs> uh, with the Model 3 in 2018, and it's going to be the, the year where like the deliveries just take off, and you, you you get to see the real potential of the vehicle. I think because um, right now it's still very much in the the core Tesla fan base. I think because you, you have to add reserve the vehicle over two years ago uh, to to take delivery. Right now, you have to be a Tesla owner to take delivery. Right now. So, or being the just the family to 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 get a, a delivery. So it's really still the, the core fan base. But as Tesla start delivering those vehicles to to new owners and even uh, I mean still people that reserved two years ago, so they have a good knowledge of uh, of Tesla for sure because you don't put a thousand dollars just for fun like that. So they, there's still people that they can be f fan of Tesla. But I think it's gonna broaden the the the, um, the market a lot for Tesla and. Uh, a lot of more people will start considering the car as a, as an option in the buying process, because right now we we still don't have the standard battery pack. We we're still stuck with the premium interior option. So the Model Three right now is not really a thirty five thousand car, as promised by Tesla originally. But if all goes well, it should be soon. It should be in the next few months. So once that's true, then a lot of people will start making the calculation. Like, okay, I'm not used to buying a thirty five thousand dollar car, but uh, if I take into account the um, uh, the gas savings, and uh, we're gonna still have the uh, in the U.S. We're gonna still have the federal tax uh, rebate, so that that might be um, make a difference too. Uh, you, we have states incentive too, so I I think it's gonna make a lot of sense for a lot of people to look into it, and uh, I think we can maybe even see like a pickup in the in the backlog uh, at some point even, so that that could be interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if, what Tesla reports. It's also like you know the people who purchased a Model Three at this point have, you know, that they, they put a thousand dollars down, but like that's knowing that you're not going to get a car for two years or whatever. I mean, when you can actually go to a Tesla store and buy, you know, like you know, in a reasonable amount of time, like maybe a month or a couple weeks or whatever, or maybe they have a, you know, like down the road when they actually supply catches up with demand. It'll be interesting to see how many people that like that's going to open up a whole new floodgate of people because, you know, generally speaking, people don't buy a car sight on scene. Like that's mm -hmm. kind of a weird. That's that's already weird. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I think the demand for the Model Three is so off the charts that you know we're just kind of scratching the surface with the you know the crazy four hundred thousand reservations. I think. There's going to be so many more people once they, you know, once their neighbor has one, once they're, you know, able to actually sit in one and drive one, and and you know, get get you know, reputable reports from them. I think that's going to kick off another wave of uh, purchasing. Yeah. And uh, you know, I don't know when. Like, I don't, I don't know when Tesla's going to. When supply is going to meet demand. Yeah, um, well, I think it's going to be sooner in the U.S. than people think, because even though right now Tesla says that uh, if you reserve a new a new Model Three right now, you, you're not going to see that until late 2018 or even 2019, something like that. But uh, once Tesla is really at five thousand a week and going toward ten thousand a week, and uh, since they they launch country by country, they they need to have the homologation in in Europe and the homologation even just in Canada. Uh, so th that can take times and can delay some some launches. Uh, I think uh, some markets gonna have it later than they they think. And uh, so, and previous experience shows us that 
even like Model X, we, which had a significant backlog for, for a vehicle of its price. And after a while, that reservation, like where you are in that number of a reservation, doesn't matter that much if uh, if production is coming and everything. So uh, I, I think maybe like second quarter to, to uh, mid-2018, you're going to be able in some market and in the US, I think you, you could... Uh, order just the, the the model three right now and get delivery in a month or two, as long as uh, production is uh, all production issues are fixed. So I'm I'm talking five thousand a week going to ten thousand. I think that makes sense. I, I think we're probably. I mean, my personal opinion is I don't think you're going to be able to buy a model three within you know like a normal amount of time until 2019. Yeah, I, I just think we're so far out right now. People are. And and nobody's ever seen one. Like, you know, like once people start seeing them, they're gonna be like, "Hey, this is real. I can actually buy one." And hey, they're great. They're fast, and they're, you know, nice interior. Like that's gonna kick off a whole another round of reservations, and like that might that might be as big as the current round of reservations. And you know, yes, Tesla's gonna be building a, a ton of these things, but like a lot more people are going to see them. And I mean, it just, it's kind of unfathomable to me how many are already reserved sight unseen two years out, whatever. And this is, you know, like by and large, like the people who have seen, you know, we've seen the prototypes and we've seen a couple, like the people who've seen them are like, yeah, they're great cars. Like it's everything we expected. Like it's, it's going to be a great car and it's going to sell well. Like, so all, all signs point to this, like these four hundred thousand, just being kind of the tip of the iceberg. So, uh, you know, I don't know that Tesla, until it starts opening factories elsewhere, um, is going to be able to keep up with demand. And you know, it, when the Model Y comes out, that's going to be a whole other uh, issue. And I, I mean, I just think. The Model 3 is going to be a big seller. It's going to be very similar to the Model T, where yeah. it's just going to be for a decade. It's going to be like one of the best-selling cars out there. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a safe bet. But uh, there's, there's also going to be another factor to take into account is that like the new version of the Model 3 when they come out, like the the the, uh, the standard battery pack and the uh, all-wheel drive, and potentially even the the performance version that was uh, promised earlier. So that gonna also change the market a lot because people that already have a reservation, there's gonna be a, a huge um, part of those, those people that are are just looking for the uh, standard battery pack or just looking for the all-wheel all drive version. So that's that's gonna change the uh, what where you are on the uh, on the reservation list. Maybe uh, some people are gonna be able to to jump the list if uh, a, a huge chunk of uh, people that are um, are closer to the top decide to wait for another version so that they can have an impact. But um, yeah, so we're talking about Model Y too. So that's something to look forward in 2018. Why we don't think it was going to go in production in 2018, I, we're pretty sure we're going to see the car. So uh, something similar to the um, Model 3 event back in uh, March 2016. We think that we're going to probably going to see a similar event for the Model Y, uh, maybe even the first half, maybe around the first the, the last time too for the Model 3, so March. So real quick, what do you think? What do you think about the Model Y? Is it going to have the Falcon Wing doors? Is it going to be kind of like a mini Model X? What What do you think? Uh, I'm thinking it's going to look a lot closer to Model Three than Model X. So, so even though Elon was trying to demand about including the Falcon Wing door, um, I'm not so sure that's going to make the final version. Um, maybe because. It, it, as I understand it, there's not that many problems with the Falcon Dawn anymore. So a lot of people were very skeptical about it. You have them right now, and you're in cold climate. You have snow and everything. It's it's not that big of a problem, right? If you open no, the they're, they're fine. I and, until I got them, I was actually pretty worried about what they would be like because I had heard so many reports. But they they seem to be pretty pretty fine. Um, yeah, they were problem with sensors too, like things like that. But that's mostly worked through, I think. Yeah, I think you know this, the software updates and mm -hmm. have, have helped those along. Um, and you know, obviously, there's a the the you know the cool factor. Like, um, I'm not a big fan of like show off cars, sure. but uh, you know, whenever I drop off my kid mm -hmm. and the door goes up, people are always like, "Ooh, ah, whatever." 
<laughs> so, you know, I don't know, I don't know what um, Tesla's going to do with the Model Y. They're clearly a company that likes to do cool and neat things. Um, you know, one one thing I saw is uh, I think Lincoln has a truck out that instead of having two, you know, like a, 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 a Falcon wing and a regular door, they just have one Falcon wing door that opens to both the front and it's the back. wing door. It's, it's not a Falcon wing. Like it's a, it's a normal one yeah. inch. One hand go, go wing, but yeah, it, it covers the front doors too. So yeah, that that that's a good point though. Uh, you're right. Maybe for a moment, why that that makes sense? I don't know really. I I, I really envision a uh, model three, just okay. a little bit higher, um, with an hatch too. Like that's right. gonna be a big deal for other people. The people who don't like the trunk of the model three. So I envision like a model three with a hatch, a little bit higher. And just that alone, I think it's gonna change uh, the market for, for for the the vehicle platform that that they're already using the Model Three. I think the, if they can keep it as close as possible as the Model Three with that and uh, share more parts, because uh, that was a thing with the Model S when Tesla introduced the Model X, they were saying, "Oh, uh, it's gonna be easier. They're gonna share a lot of parts." But uh, I don't remember the exact number, but it was extremely low at first. I think Tesla worked to add more parts uh, with time. But uh, at first, the Model X and Model S shared very little parts, which uh, um, contributed to the early production issues with the Model X. So if they can uh, instead get that closer with Model 3, Model Y, and uh, get the car to production faster, it could have a bigger impact on the market, I think, than uh, having something flashy like a, a Falcon wing door. But uh, at the same time, I would also like to see Falcon wing door on a, on a, on a vehicle that I could purchase. Um, but yeah, we are we're gonna see the Model Y in 2018. We're um, almost 100 percent sure of that. Uh, they were already like uh, we we know this last prototypes already and, and stuff like that. We've seen uh, at least clear models and stuff uh, already leak. Well, not the full thing, but we we saw that they, they had one in the design studio when they they were working on the Model Three. But if we move to Tesla's current vehicle programs in 2018, uh, aside from Model Three, already talked a lot about Model Three, Model S and Model X. We think those should see a few updates in 2018, and we're not just talking about uh, software updates. Um, like we said, no new battery pack in 2017. Tesla generally have a, a few a few of those in the works. So um, Elon Musk said that uh, Tesla isn't really looking to push further than uh, 100 kilowatt. Uh, kilowatt hours for for a battery pack for a passenger car, which makes sense. You you actually better off focusing on the if your energy density improves, then you you stick with 100 kilowatt hours, but you you make it lighter and uh, you you can achieve more range that way. But um, and also of, and also yeah. charging by like getting that yeah. infrastructure charging goes faster faster and, charging yeah. But um, yeah, as soon as you improve your efficiency, then you you, you improve your charging time too. But uh, if you talk about another uh, level of battery pack, a new capacity of battery pack, I think that would make sense in 2018 to maybe further differentiate the uh, the standard version of the Model S and the Model 3. Uh, we, we don't, we're, we're speculating right now, but the only good clue that we have is, uh, if you remember, a few months back, uh, Tesla started shipping 85 kilowatt because Tesla officially discontinued the 85 kilowatt hour pack over a year ago. But a few months back, they started delivering new 85 kilowatt hour packs on, on their new code. Uh, so it's, it wasn't whole packs so that they were repackaged. It was a new code for the pack. 85 kilowatt hour packs software locked at 75. And uh, it was a very weird thing to happen because we were the only ones basically to, to report on that. We worked with a source in, in Norway uh, because uh, the First few pack ended up uh, coming to Norway in the in Model S and Model X seventy five and seventy five D, and Tesla never acknowledged it. Like we 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 tried to work with Tesla and uh, well, what's up with our with you guys delivering the five kilowatt hour pack so for luck at seventy five, and uh, the the owners weren't weren't aware of it, and Tesla didn't want to talk about it, didn't want to comment about it. Then they did the same thing in the U S uh, a few months later, and same thing happened, and uh, but if you and and it wasn't like all cars that were 75 were delivered at 85 software lock at 75 kilowatt hour. It was just like a few models on a few equations, but it was in the hundreds, I think. Like it wasn't like a dozen or so. It was hundreds of cars. And uh, but most other cars 
that were 75 were really 75 or whatever is the actual capacity of the pack. I think it's a little bit more than 75 now. But uh, anyway, so that was weird. Maybe that was a test or something, or uh, we're not sure they were maybe trying to uh, add a new model, uh, a new model to the pack or, or something like that. Um, maybe it's something that's going to come out as a regular model in 2018. I don't know, but it, it will make sense to have like a, Though it's pretty close, right? If you have a, an 85 and a and 100, because uh, right now it's a big jump, like you went from 75 to 100. Yeah, 75 and 100 seems like a nice, you know, jump, nice space. Yeah. Um, 85, a little bit less so, but, you know, if there's 85s out there, maybe that means, you know, Elon wasn't being 100% honest and, and they've got 110 or 120 back coming. Who knows? Oh yeah, it's, it wasn't definitive. Like we won't, we will never do anything stronger than a hundred for uh, for model S and X. Um, and that could be him just and not, you know like easing concerns because that you know when you're buying a Tesla, you're like, well, I want to make sure that they're not going to upgrade anytime soon. So I want to you know I want to buy, and you know maybe that's him uh, assaging concerns that yeah. Yeah, but uh, aside from the battery pack, too, uh, we could see other different upgrades this year to the Model S and Model X program. I'm thinking maybe something like an, an interior refresh, maybe. Uh, so Tesla never had like a, a full on interior refresh. There was an exterior refresh in 2016. Um, but in terms of interior, it, it, it changed considerably over the years since the launch of 2012 in the Model S. It changed a lot. The seats uh, changed a lot. Uh, the, the interior trims changed a lot. Um, the uh, the back seat uh, changed this year. This year there was like a significant update to the back seat too, uh, but uh, it was like gradual. It wasn't like a big refresh at the same time. So I don't know. Since they there was a lot of upgrades over the years, like it, you won't change the back seat right now. So they changed the back seat just a few months back. But uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's something that could make sense in 2018, like a, a more or less. Uh, MLS, MLX, interior, interior redesign. Yeah, so my 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 take on that is, you know, I have some software developer friends who are kind of like baffled why Tesla now has two UIs. They have the long of the the Model S and the Model X, and and kind of the the Roadster also had kind of a, a long, skinny uh, UI. You mean the new one, the new one, right? Yeah, the new Roadster has yeah. that, you know, new uh, like OLED long. Display, whereas the uh, the Model Three has the uh, horizontal. Horizontal, it's 15 inch, um, but it's kind of weird that Tesla's working on two totally separate UIs. Um, you know, obviously, like the elements inside the UIs are 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 taken from each other and, and used over and over again. But um, would it surprise you to to see that, like, you know, an upgrade to the Model S and Model X, where you also get that big, you know, maybe maybe it's bigger. Maybe it's not a 15-inch display. Maybe it's like a 21-inch display. Um, you know, maybe you get a 21-inch 4K display um, for that, for the Model S and X instead of the uh, the, the longer, I think it's 17-inch current. Yeah, 17-inch. Uh, I agree with the, the, the weirdness of having a, a vertical uh, experience versus an horizontal experience. That makes sense. But I think Tesla wants to keep uh, like the two screen advantage of uh, of Model S and X. That's something like they mentioned in like the comparison. If you want a more luxury, you want the Model S and Model S has two screen. The Model Three has only one screen. So when they try to upsell you to a Model S from a Model Three, that's one thing that they use. So switching to just one screen uh, and uh, an horizontal one instead of vertical one for Model S and X. I'm not that sure, but uh, like if we talk interior, there's other things like that was introduced in the Model Three, like the uh, uh, the climate control, like the, the fan systems that's uh, really like right now, I think, from already Model 3 owners. So we're going to look into that more with uh, with Jamie getting his Model 3 this week. But um, that may be something that could make it to, to the interior of Model 3, Model S. But that alone has uh, some other implications. So like, if you do that one fan thing, then can you have a second screen? Can you have the instrument cluster? How do you work that into just um, a fan that runs along the entire dash? So that has an interesting implica implications. Also, there's a camera in the Model 3, uh, interior yeah. camera. So that might be an interesting uh, add-on if you ever plan to Uber your car or whatever. 
yeah driver facing and terror facing camera so that as uh when we reported on that uh earlier this year this year we reported that the codes also in the in the tesla source code of the software uh made mention of the tesla network so that it was both um, part of like a autopilot uh hardware suit if you will it's, it's another sensor but there was also mention of the tesla network so very useful for like said mentioned the uh the, the a right sure uh, right sure element um other things that could come to the uh mol s and mol x if there's upgrades to the battery pack and the powertrain in general um maybe an upgrade in the charge rates like if uh, we, we talk about just charge rate well charging time uh improving with the efficiency of a, of a vehicle, but just pure charge rate, like be, the capacity to take a bigger power output from uh, from a DC charger, from a supercharger, that that would be something to uh, um, that would make sense to come relatively soon because uh, competitors right now, even though the, the networks are not coming close to the the size and uh, and availability of the supercharger network, the charge rates are starting to beat Tesla. Though we we, we saw last week. Uh, uh, we saw 175 or was that in, in europe oh, like 175 kilowatts i think that was uh, deployed uh, it's operational it's working right now there's no cars i can take <laughs> maybe maybe tesla could take it or, or something because uh, um tesla talked a lot about uh, increasing the charge rates and it, it never come it's been yeah like, and, uh, and i wonder if the um the new battery packs that are in the model 3 i wonder if they make it over i mean that would be a big deal if if all of a sudden Tesla started uh, putting the 2170. Is it 2170 or 2070? I keep 20, forgetting. 2070 cells, yeah. 2070 cells. If those are able to charge a lot quicker than um, the 18650s that are currently in the Model S and X, I wonder if uh, that would be a big, I mean, that would clearly be a big deal if those, those batteries could somehow charge yeah, a lot it, quicker. So big of a deal that Tesla wouldn't confirm it until it's in the Model S and Model X. That's that's right. the thing too. Uh, right. So we're just talking about that uh, the announcing features that are are headed like right now. It's not even in the same vehicle program. If you announce a feature that's in another vehicle program of Tesla, people will want to assume that it's going to be in another one. So you, you you can do that. What we've seen right now from our example, I don't, I don't think I've seen anything higher than 120 kilowatts because technically one supercharger can deliver. 145, I think, but uh, all all Tesla vehicles so far have been locked. All Model S and X have been locked to 120 max. Uh, and what I've seen so far from Model 3, from just examples of uh, of supercharging the Model 3, I've never seen anything higher than 120. So I don't yeah, know. Even in the summer with an empty Model X uh, 90, uh, mm -hmm. we never we never even got. I think we got close to 120. We had like 118 or something like that. So yeah. Um, so we many factors yeah coming to accounts for the, for those things but that would be nice to see in 2018 coming and um uh one thing of course that that the owner is going to be uh, looking forward in 2018 is the autopilot program what kind of progress we can see in the autopilot program in 2018 so there's no there's no idea like 2017 was rough for, for people with uh, autopilot 2.0 and uh, and even 2.5 now um so people are waiting for autopilot and enhanced autopilot features, even technically fully self-driving. So uh, we reported like 30, 35 percent of uh, autopilot 2.0 buyers ended up purchasing uh, self fully self-driving features, and that's uh, that's a big investment that they are not seeing much return on it right now. No. Uh, by much, I mean not at all. <laughs> right. Uh, and so, depending on who you ask, right now. Autopilot 2.0 is basically at feature parity with Autopilot uh, first generation Autopilot. I don't think if you agree with that, like yeah, I, I honestly I don't even know if that's the case. Like yeah, uh, I mean when I'm I I, I have Autopilot too on the model. I'm talking so. about just I'm just talking about like a uh, tack and uh, like traffic over cruise control and, and auto auto steer. Like it, it, yeah, I'm so not, features uh, yes, but yeah, those 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 two features like are, are, they are performing as well or better than autopilot one what do you think uh my feeling is that i don't know if they do uh yeah. perform as well because um you know on a on a nice straight um kind of flat well painted and um paved highway uh the ap2 uh, hardware does fine but um once things you know like once you get on kind of like a not 
well done highway, it gets scary. Like, I, you know, my, my wife won't let me do it with, with anybody in the car. Uh, <laughs> so it's, I mean, it's, it's definitely, it, and, and you know what? I see like uh, videos of AP one doing a lot better than AP two. And, and so I'm, you know, I, I've not scientifically, I haven't scientifically tested oh, exactly. it. It just feel, it just feels to me like AP two isn't where AP one is yet. And that was supposed to happen, I think in January, right? Yeah. A year ago in December, 2016. But so yeah, I, I don't think I like personally, I don't think I had I spent enough time with AP one to, to like, did I spent more time with AP two than AP one. So I don't have like a, the best uh, opinion, uh, most valuable opinion on it here, but Same. I get fed a lot of, uh, yeah, you, you you also went from like a pre no. autopilot to autopilot two point two car, so right. you're in a similar position as I am. But uh, even though I don't have a car with autopilot right now, but I mean, I, I spend a lot more time with AP two than AP one. But um, I get fed a lot of of, uh, of videos and, and comments from from owners uh, and a lot of owners that went from AP one to AP two, and uh, yeah, it. it AP2 is definitely better at some things than AP1, and AP1 might be better at other things that, than, than AP2. But like on a general sense, um, I think a lot of people start to agree that uh, AP2 is, st is starting just to, to, to get ahead of the curve than, than IP1. But uh, the good news is that what slowed down the uh, implementation of new features of Fortopilot in 2017 was working on uh, the neural net system and uh, working on Tesla, Tesla Vision, the new uh, computer vision system from Tesla. So, uh, and, and we saw that if you just look at the data that Tesla collected this year, uh, the, the the big, like the, Tesla didn't start um, collecting data and volume until May of 2017. So when you take that into account, and I, I, there was like one bump in May, and I think a few months later, like uh, in July or something, there were another bump and Tesla started collecting even more data from his uh, autopilot cars. And uh, now that they have like the neural net system in place that, they, that they, they can feed the data to the neural net and improve, I think that equates to uh, laying the foundation for the autopilot and hence autopilot and fully for solar driving. And now in 2018, the features will come in. And I know that Musk uh, this week and, uh, and last month, started hyping an upcoming uh, software update that will uh, start to impress people more. So that, that has been the case for the past uh, few months, really, and uh, we, uh, we haven't seen that yet. Uh, even John McNeil, Tesla president from, for sales and service, when he was in the, in the Netherlands uh, uh, two months ago, uh, did the same thing. He says that he had access to the, uh, the latest uh, beta update for the, uh, the autopilot and that uh, he was really impressed. So uh, I don't know if it's, that's something that uh, can calm uh, some, because uh, there's definitely uh, is frustration with uh, autopilot uh, Tesla owners with, with autopilot that bought the uh, five thousand and then the eight thousand dollar features that uh, is not really up to to, to that price yet. But, do you I mean, do you think that um, the the roadmap kind of got shaken uh, when uh, Sterling Anderson left? Um, you're sorry, Sterling. What's his name? Sterling. Yeah, Ster Anderson. Uh, yeah, no, no, Sterling Anderson. Yeah, Sterling yeah. Anderson. Yeah, there were a lot of uh, of changed the leadership of the pilot over over the last year. So it went from uh, Sterling Anderson to um, now. I'm not sure anymore <laughs> if it's uh, Sterling Anderson or Anderson Sterling. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Sterling Anderson. And then uh, the the Apple Chris guy. That, the, yeah, Chris Leitner came on. Then. So those guys were like the, the program director of the autopilot, the, the, right. the overall program. But uh, then on the, uh, uh, you also had like uh, Jim Keller was uh, leading the hardware and it wasn't. So after Chris uh, left, they, they brought Caperty on and, but so it was, it was reported a lot as Caperty was, was overseeing the old program now, like, uh, uh, like uh, Latner and uh, Anderson uh, war, but uh, he ended up just taking over the um, uh, the software side, or not even just the software side, a uh, focus on the because uh, there are other people working like on the just delivering software, which is is 
pretty incredible job for autopilot because you're delivering software that's basically controlling the car on the highway and stuff. So it's it's pretty insane stuff to deliver that, to deliver that. But uh, Caperly Caper ended up focusing more on the AI aspect and the neural net system because that's really is a um, and vision too. That's really is it, it, that's what he's good at. Um, and uh, Jim Keller ended up overseeing now the old program of autopilot uh, when, when uh, Chris Lattner left. And now he's also in charge of making a, a chip, as we learned uh, last month. So, uh, yeah, of course, a few change in leadership like that uh, to answer Seth's question. Yeah, it's uh, it, it must have an impact on uh, on delivering uh, uh, more more features to the autopilot program. But uh, every when we take everything into account, I think. Technically, 2018 should be a, a much better year for Autopilot. What else? What else? So, should yeah. we should we talk about uh, some some of the other vehicles outside of Tesla, the electric vehicles? Because you know, when when you were putting this together last week, I was kind of surprised at the you know the relative few amount of new vehicles that we expect in 2018. And and you know, it's not like the electronics industry where you know Apple releases something. That you had no idea existed, and it's in stores like a couple of days later. Um, cars are different. Like you, you know about a car, you know, years in advance. You know, years in advance. So it's kind of weird that there's not much coming down the pike uh, this year or 2018, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, but there are some cool things happening, and there's some you know upgrades, and there's some cool stuff that's kind of just ramping up now. Um, so you know what, what we talked about, like the iPace and and uh, some cool stuff coming out of Korea. What's 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 exciting for you outside of Tesla? Yeah, like you said, I was surprised by that too. Like I, when I decided to make a post about the electric cars that are actually coming to market, like not not just new unveils and new prototypes and stuff, just cars that are gonna get in the hands of customer. Uh, yeah, it was just uh, I-Pace, uh, Audi Quattro, uh, Yande is coming both with the uh, electric version of the uh, Kona and the Niro. Well, Niro is, is Kia, but Kia is, a, is, is Yande, so it's the same thing. So that that's four, four new cars, like officially, that, that's coming from established automakers. Four new cars. So yeah, you asked me what, what's exciting. Uh, not that excited about the, the Kona and the Niro. Uh, and, for a few, and those are based on like the Ionic, I think, which is the powertrain is, but uh, the the both vehicles are existing vehicles uh, with uh, uh, ICE engines and uh, and uh, PHEV uh, plug-ins engines. So, uh, so we're talking about all the three versions, like they did with the Ionic. You're right, let's right. Like with the Ionic, but the, but the, the Ionic actual... is not a powerful. It's not a. Uh, it's no. not a Tesla by any stretch of the imagination. It's a yeah. uh, kind of compliancey car. So the, the, the only uh, good thing about, well, nah, that's not fair. It's not the only good thing. It's a, it's a decent car. Uh, the, but the best thing about the I think that's a better way to phrase that, uh, is the price. So it's, uh, it's very cheap. Uh, it's fairly cheap when you account for incentives. So if, if, it, if there weren't any incentive, I don't know if uh, that many people would buy that kind of car for $30,000. But so that that same advantage, the pricing advantage, it looks like it might uh, make it to the uh, Kona and the uh, Nero electric version too. Uh, no prices yet uh, have been uh, confirmed, but uh, they are talking about thirty-five thousand euros, so that's forty thousand dollars. So in terms of a crossover small SUV, that'd be the best price right now for an electric vehicle, and. Apparently, they're working for the 50 kilowatt hour pack, which is also a pack that should make it to the new Ionic uh, next year or the year after that. So it's going to be the same Ionic, but with a pack upgrade, uh, not unlike what we're seeing with the Nissan Leaf. So Leaf, the next gen, it, it came out with a, a 40 kilowatt hour pack, but uh, they should launch a 60 this year, uh, next year. So something similar. So there, there might be something interesting there. Uh, yeah, I mean, but if, the, a, if the Ionic gets a 50 kilowatt battery. Then that's that's going to be some serious range because with a 26 kilowatt, it's a 26 I think um, kilowatt. I think it goes 120. Oh yeah, 28. It goes 125 miles or so. Mm -hmm. 
So bumping it up to 50 is probably going to put it to 200. So yeah. 200 miles on a 50 kilowatt battery. And uh, I'm imagining that it's not going to cost that much uh, more than what the current price is. So that, that might be an interesting car on the yeah. low end. But in terms of volumes, that, that was that's what's bugging me with uh, Hyundai. And uh, the, uh, even right now, the Ionic Electric is in low volume. And they're still talking about... Uh, uh, so there they were sources, uh, I was saying, sources from the uh, supply chain in Korea that was talking about uh, Hyundai planning for 20,000 units of each. So it's still a very low-volume car. They got probably focus the um, the deliveries in the uh, in carbs market with uh, ZEV mandates and uh, some European markets. That makes sense. But so what we're most excited about is uh, the uh, the I-Pace, the Jaguar I-Pace, and the Audi Quattro. So those are both more expensive vehicles, vehicles that aim to compete more with uh, the the Model X uh, than anything else. But the the most exciting thing about them, I think, uh, for for the Audi Quattro at least, they specifically mentioned that it's not going to be a compliance car. So if we are to take them to their word uh, there, then uh, then then that's that's going to be like a full EV program. All electric vehicle built to be electric from the ground up for from a major a German automaker. So that's just on its own. It's exciting without having driven the vehicle yet that they have that kind of commitment. And yeah. if we look at the actual specs, uh, it does make sense. A 95 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, they're talking about 310 miles, but that's uh, in DC, so uh, probably like 250 to 75, something like that. Um, the only thing for the Quattro that we don't know for sure yet it's uh is the price. So that that's if if they are going after the Model X, then you can expect something like seventy five thousand and up. But because uh, that's the thing is too like <laughs> if you look at the the pricing when when automakers are established automakers that already have an extensive uh, product lineup, they they introduce an EV and they say oh we, it's going to be positioned between this model and this model. And those two models are like uh, forty and fifty thousand dollars. So you think that since it's going to be positioned between them, it's going to be the same price or in, in, in the same range. But then it's and then and it ends up being like ten, twenty thousand uh, dollars more expensive. And oh, we were taking into account the incentive and, and, and so forth and the gas price and, and everything, which makes sense to a degree. But uh, I think the sticker price, uh, like uh, how, what do you call it, the sticker shock or something like that, that has a big impact on uh, on people at the end of the day. Like a lot of people just don't take into account like gas saving and stuff. They don't want to. But yeah, uh, yeah. In terms of the uh, if the uh, Jaguar though, the I Pace, uh, we we got new information last week. We, we talked about it on the podcast, so we won't go into details. But um, it looks like it's gonna be really like a Model X competitor, but in, in smaller size. So that's coming in the second half of 2018. So it's gonna be like a 2019 model officially, but it's gonna it should get into the dealership in 2018. So technically, we're talking about launch in 2018. Yeah, and it might be good for people who don't like the Tesla interiors, you know, the kind of the sparse, uh, minimalist interiors. Um, although, you know, at, as far as Jaguars go, it did seem a little bit minimalist. Uh, yeah, the prototype, yeah. So, um, but, you know, Jaguar's been doing in pretty good interiors for a long time. So I think that's one area where they can differentiate and maybe pull in some people who... Uh, you know, maybe didn't buy a Model X or a Model S because uh, they, they didn't like the interior. Uh, so that might be good. And the same goes for the Audi. Uh, you know, Audis uh, are much nicer inside, or not nicer, but much uh, more plush, I guess, would be a, a way to describe it, where, you know, there's a lot more dials and knobs and, and vents and all those things that uh, fill out the in interior of a car. So I think both the Quattro, I mean, we've been hearing about Audi and, you know, the greater Volkswagen making EVs forever. It, it might be nice that one actually comes out besides the e-Golf. So that would be that would be exciting for me just on that basis alone. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be the first uh, all electric vehicle built from the ground up to be electric. If you don't account for like the, uh, the ODI rate electric that came out a few years ago, but it was dead on arrival at a million dollars a pop and uh from the entire volkswagen family like you said so that's really the first one volkswagen has a lot of brands now we're talking audi we're talking porsche we're talking uh, uh vw we're talking uh, 
what else? Like they have a bunch of uh, Europe only brands, like uh, Eastern Europe brands, uh, Eastern European brands and stuff. So like they're, Skoda, they're pretty big. Skoda, I think. Or... Yeah, Skoda and, and such. And the, the e-golf is basically just a, a compliance type car where they take the golf and they gut the internal combustion engine and they throw in uh, some batteries and uh, electric engine and they say, look, we're making an EV. Yeah. Yeah, you, you look at the actual like motor compartment of the of the Eagle, and it looks like the weirdest thing ever. Uh, he just like he, he took out the the engine and just strapped some new um, um, new mounts to uh, a steel mount to, to put the inverter to put the the, the, the motor and everything. So it's, it's uh, it, you can see that it's just like a, a Frankenstein of a of an EV. Um, but uh, but speaking of the Eagle this week. Uh, VW ended up announcing that they were doubling the production of it at the. Uh, I think it's they they make it at uh, at two two different factories, uh, and the main one, like the one that they call the transparent factories, which is uh, architecturally speaking, is is really like a beautiful factory, and they were making like just thirty five a day or something like that, and they they uh, they plan to double that next year, so you can see that's like um, a buffer for for until they have the the real volume production EVs coming in the, in 2008 well with the Quattro then 2019 is going to be the first route for VW um for for the VW brand so that's like a buffer in the meantime for yeah. where, where we have higher demand yeah. and I think a lot of that is uh Norway like uh when when we look at Norway's numbers e-golfs are always like you know up there with Tesla and yeah. and well, the golf know, is already popular in Norway like it's just the, right. the, the diesel with version so but um you know, you don't have uh, the Chevy Bolt or Volt uh, in Norway. You have the Ampera and, you know, Chevy or GM sent like, you know, 10 over there for the no, year. A few, a few hundreds. It, it ended up sending a few hundreds, but. Uh, but not enough, clearly. Yeah, well, yeah, actually, that's a good point. Yeah, because uh, uh, it could be a competitor, especially with the 2017 version that uh, end up with uh, almost 40 kilowatt hour battery pack, so the, the range is not that bad. I think it's like 130 miles, or something like that, close right. to 200 kilometers. And um, when, uh, so yeah, the, the GM did end up sending a few hundred uh, bolts to Opel to sell as an Emperor E in, in Norway, but uh, last month things degenerated with, uh, with between Opel and, and GM, uh, at least according to Opel, they said that. Uh, they were increasing the price out of nowhere since uh, GM sold Opel to uh, to Peugeot, uh, Peugeot and uh, the PSA group, the Peugeot and mm -hmm. Citroën, and uh, they said they were increasing the price even on those that are, were not on. It wasn't even a reservation for them. They were like they signed a contract with the dealerships. Even people that did sign a contract with the dealership, but uh, they they had a delivery plan in uh, like maybe late 2017 or, or, or 2018. Uh, even them were um, were giving the the price increase, which was uh, as much as I think five thousand dollars, five thousand dollars or euros. I'm not, I'm not sure. So I swear that number. So I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that a lot of people just canceled from that, and even just just by um, just by principle, really, it's a, it's a shitty thing to do. So, uh, and those people might have turned more to a a, a knee golf than. A, than the Tesla or something like that. So yeah, maybe the and, new leaf too. New leaf is popular. The, the new leaf is going to be big everywhere. I, you know, relatively big everywhere. And we haven't really talked too much about that. And I guess that's a 2018 car for. So I mean, yeah, that's that's one thing that we didn't mention in the in the post. Like, uh, yeah, the the leaf technically in the U.S. is going to be a 2018 car. But. Yeah, and, you know, it's 150 miles. Like they're going to have a 60 kilowatt engine one, which will probably push it closer to 200 miles. Um, you know, we've we've tooled around in in the Leaf. Uh, Jameson did a uh, review, uh, kind of a, a first look. It, no, he, I mean, he actually drove it. But so, um, I don't know. It's just not very exciting. Like, it's it's in every way better than the previous Leaf. Like, that's one thing you, you have to give it to. Me. Like, they didn't. They made everything except better. for charging. But, every way better except for charging. They have the exact same charging infrastructure than that. Right. So, or the same or better. And it's kind of, yeah, it's frustrating at this point that um, you don't get, you know, a better a better car, you know, more miles. Uh, you know, it's bigger inside, which is nice. Uh, we, you know, we looked at the in interior. It's, it's perfectly fine. 
not exciting, but, um, you know, there were little things like the doors, you know, they're not like super quality doors. They're like, kind of feels like a, uh, you know, the, the lowest end kind of doors and like the, the charging port feels like it could be ripped off accidentally. Like Nissan isn't like an aspirational <laughs> brand, you know, it's, it's like, you know, like I'm, I gotta get from point A to point B like they sat on their lead that's the thing like they're they really big about, yeah they had it you know they had they were they were the ev and, and they, they yeah. think you're still they still are like if you if uh, i remember i, I cringe a few times with the when with the launch of the of the new leaf i like the car i like the redesign well I'm not the biggest fan of the design but comparatively to the, the last generation it was like <laughs> definitely a, a big update but they they were completely delusional about being the leader and the they, they they did deliver a lot of leaf, but uh, if you look at what's the pipeline from other manufacturers, like it doesn't it's it, it's not it's not up to the level that people what are people getting. I, I mean, forget Tesla. Like, just compare the Chevy Bolt to it. Like, the Chevy yeah. Bolt is better in every way. It's faster, way bigger battery. You know, it charges faster. Um, you know, like the interior size isn't quite as big, but it's like pretty close. Um, just tons of tons of things that. You know, Chevy blew right by Nissan, and and they didn't catch up. Like, yeah. 150 miles versus 240, it's like no, it's like a night and day difference. You you look at the comment right now, Q-tip chart. The Leaf is average, looking at best. It, it's right. It'll, it's not. It's not a great looking car, that's for sure. But I mean, comparatively to what it looked like of the previous generation, then it's uh, like most aesthetically pleasing car in the world, comparatively. But uh, speaking of the aesthetically pleasing car. The, uh, the the porch uh, the, the porsche uh, the um how do you pronounce porsche i, I said just porsche but the people say porsche sometimes i don't know yeah it's weird i don't know uh, the uh, mission east this week we we had the uh, uh, automobile magazine ended up getting an exclusive uh test drive of the prototype and uh with their test drive the uh the the wrote a report on it uh mentioning exclusive sources with new information uh, and considering there were like a lot of uh, of Porsche engineer at the event, we we can assume that uh, those sources are pretty good. And um, they did mention a few interesting that they were going to be three different trims, uh, a lot similar. So uh, there's no idea yet. Like they they're going with the Mission E, they're going after the uh, the Model S. That's for sure. They were even benchmarking the uh, the Model S against the right. Mission E. And uh, the the car is in similar size as a like a sedan, uh, four doors. Um, uh, the, the 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 big question was the price. A lot of people was were assuming that uh, uh, Porsche is going to be uh, priced a lot higher than the Model S. But that report sa stated that the base vehicle should be around seventy five thousand, which should be similar to 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 what uh, the Model S if you compare to what the Model S right now. So that's that's a big thing when 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 people try to compare the Mission E to the Model S. So you're comparing the Model S right now versus the Mission E in two thousand nineteen two thousand twenty. So that's like the Model S 20, 2019, 2020 is not the Model S today. It's gonna is gonna be different for sure. It's gonna be better. It's gonna be um, maybe the mission, cheaper. The mission but, e, that's a that's a four seater, right? Uh, that's the other thing too. So yeah, the uh, the, the the prototype is a four seater, but uh, if you look at the prototype and what's gonna be the production version, like you know, people are speculating right now. Uh, we we heard from from, from sources earlier this year that uh, maybe the, like the the back seat is going to change is going to have a five seat, uh, and uh, also even like the suicide doors right now that you see on the prototype maybe that won't make it to production, which would be a bummer. So I understand why like suicide door you don't have a B pillar so that the structure of the roof can be more difficult to make strong and everything, but it looks cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that I mean that's something that's exciting about you know. It's a Porsche. Like Porsches yeah. are exciting. Um, you know, when when this report came out, there were a lot of people who were like, "Whoa, that's a that's an excellent car." And yeah. then you know, there's the you know R.I.P. Tesla short people who mm -hmm. say like, "Well, as soon as Porsche comes out with this," but you know, obviously, mm -hmm. there's a lot of other things that Tesla brings to the table, like yeah. charging infrastructure, like seven seats. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people like the Tesla aesthetic, internal, and that you know the inside and out mm -hmm. um it's you know we don't know what the final specs are going to be um you know speed wise as well but clearly it's a porsche it's going to be fast but 
you know, I don't think it's going to be P100 fast. Um, no, they said it already in the report. They said like uh, in terms of uh, well, fast. I don't know. Well, fast. I, I think they said the same thing. I think it's someone like 155. So uh, same top speed. speed as the uh, as the Mo S. But in terms of quickness of, of the acceleration, uh, they were talking about uh, 3.5 for 0 to 60. So it's like a full second slower than than the top uh, of the line Mo S. Right, and that's this year's Tesla. Yeah, not it's this year's 2019s. Moment. So the so, only the only thing that they confirm and, and the the uh, also if you, you can look the report on Otomo magazine and we have like a summary on electric that just pull out the uh, the new information that just what's uh, what's been reported already and uh, the the actual power outputs of the, the three different motor configuration for uh, for the trims uh, also looks very similar to what Mo S has right now. The big thing that you're trying to sell the learning push people is that the car is going to be able to perform on track. So you can bring that car to the track and do few laps without overeating, which is a problem right now with the Model S. It's not a vehicle that you want to bring to the track, even the performance version. It's good on the drag strip. It's just not good on the uh, Nurburgring or, or, or any uh, uh, power extensive track. Uh, they also, of course, since they're a German company, they, they mentioned the, the, uh, the Autobahn. You can push that car on the uh, left lane on the autobahn at 200 kilometers an hour and uh, uh, you should be able to drive for, for for a long time without just draining the battery i know if i just like drive like 20 over the limit uh, uh, here uh, it drains the battery pretty fast so i can i can only imagine in the autobahn if you don't have a speed limit at all like uh, it, it can be a big drain on it but aesthetically speaking just on the aesthetic speaking the mission is just gorgeous. I, I think a, a lot, a lot better than the Model S, in my opinion. But at the same time, I understand like the the Model S is designed also the the the, uh, the maybe the improvement in design for the Mission E compared to the Model S is is it worth it? The uh, functionalities that you're gonna lose because the Model S is not as sleek as the as the uh, Mission E, but the, the interior is gotta be a lot smaller, I think, ultimately, or less maybe not smaller, but like less cargo, less functional. Yeah, at least from what you see for the prototype, it certainly looks like that. And the, the one one other thing is the charging rate. Uh, Porsche is talking about oh, a yeah. three hundred fifty kilowatt charging rate, which is about more than double what uh, Tesla currently does. So how do they get there? Do they have, you know? Well, they have a full 800 volt system and still about 40, uh, 40 volts. Right, but how do they? 400 volt. How do their batteries handle that? Is is my question. Like, do yeah, they have, like a new technology that we don't know about, or is it kind of wishful thinking, or is that something Tesla ha will have in two years? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't think it, we never got the information about the cells of, to, because there's a lot of things that comes into play in terms of the charging capacity in the battery pack and the uh, and the, the wiring and everything. But uh, you know, at one point, it comes down to the cells themselves and their 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 just charge rate and the, their charging rate. And we don't even know what the cells are in the porch. I don't think it never never came out yet. So that's definitely something that we're going to look into 2018. That's a good thing to uh, keep in mind. Um, cause that's one of the most exciting, I think, EV program coming in the, in the next few years, because like we said, 2018, a lot, a lot of, of interest are coming, but not as much as we would like to, but 2019, 2020, that's going to be the stuff for the EV world. I think that's, uh, we're going to need more writer and electric, I think in 2019, 2020, cause I, I won't be able with, uh, with our, our team right now, three or four people to, to handle all those cars coming to market. But uh, we had a great year in 2017, and uh, that's going to be the last time you're going to we, we, we're going to talk to you on the podcast for the year. We're going to come back next week. It's going to be 2018. And uh, as usual, thanks for listening. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see you in 2018. Yeah, catch you next time.